A few years ago, I made these Wolverine claws, and they worked out all right, but they're a bit uncomfortable. So I'm gonna replace them with these. Hello there, fellow maker. Welcome down to my shop. I'm Bill, and today I'm gonna be rebuilding the mechanical parts of my Wolverine claw. Of course, today we are live over on our Twitch channel. If you wanna go on over there and give us a follow, then you can catch these things when we do them live. Now, a couple of years ago, I made these claws here for a Wolverine costume, and a bunch of folks in the comments have pointed out that my beard is getting quite glorious, and there's a reason for that. You see, Dragon Con's coming up, and I wanna go as Old Man Logan. But I need new claws. These ones are the wrong shape. Uh, for the new movie, and they're also kind of wobbly and not very well put together. So uh, I'm gonna rebuild these and make them even more sturdy for my new costume. Here's what I have laid out for the build. I've done a bit of prototyping before I got here. So these are the grips for the hand part, and I've done these out of just a plastic that I had laying around. It might be Delrin, I'm not really sure. But I did one of them, it worked out pretty good. I didn't really cut it great on the bandsaw. So I moved over to version two and did some more spacing on this. This is a piece of aluminum rod that goes in like that. That worked out pretty well. So I moved on to aluminum. Now this plastic would probably work for what I need, but I figured I've got a metal cutting bandsaw that I wanted to try out and I wanted to do more with metal. So this is the next prototype that I made. It worked out pretty well. You can see the way it works is these two screws clamp these three rods in place and then my hand can go around it and I'll hold it like that. This pinky part's a little bit askew here so I'm gonna be rebuilding this one today and showing you how I do it. These rods here are what will eventually hold the claws. And again, I prototyped these. These are just a uh, cardboard cutout uh, just to kind of proof of concept it. Eventually these will be made out of a plastic. This is a quarter inch sheet of PVC foam. This is what I'll be making the claws out of. But today, we're focusing on this part, the hand grippy part. So, why don't I get started? Here's a couple of quick reference pictures from the Logan movie. And you can see they come out a lot lower than in some of the older versions of it. Here's something that someone made. Uh, but these, this image right here is the actual stunt ones from the movie. And this is what I'm basing my design off of. I can see the handle here looks like a piece of aluminum, the slot in it for holding those. So that's kind of what I use to design it all. The rest of this I traced out in Inkscape to make my pattern for the blades. This is a piece of aluminum rod I got from the hardware store and it's a quarter inch thick and I'm gonna cut it to length. This is my design that I came up with for the top and side view and these holes that I'll be drilling are the right length for my hand or the spacing for my hand. But the length of this is going to be just over two and three quarters. So we can do that. I can make a mark and this is where we'll cut it. There we go. So we got a nice mark right there. I'm going to take it over to the metal cutting bandsaw, chop this guy down. Uh, we'll do that twice and then we'll have our two sandwich pieces for our claw hand thing. This is the metal cutting bandsaw that I got recently. It's new to me so I'm just lining it up on my line there and then turning this knob to tighten it down like so and then turn it on let the gravity do all the work and then it will hit the stop button and turn itself off very cool and it's actually not as terrifying as I thought it would be let's do this Look at that! Cut off the piece, and then turn itself off. Good job, little buddy. Just need to do that one more time. We've got our two aluminum bars right here. There's a bit of a rough edge on there, and I have this deburring tool, which is kind of cool. Um, it's a sharp little thing. It's a fairly safe way to kind of trim off the edge. It's still a little sharp there. 
but it puts a, a little chamfer on the edge of the, the, the metal there to make it a little bit safer. You could also use a file to just sort of round everything over like that. That'll do for now. But what I need to do now is go get my vise. This is the vise for my drill press and I got a little piece of wood here to hold these up a little bit so that I can drill through them. So those two pieces get lined up and clamped down. And then I need to figure out where to drill my holes. Let's make sure we're all nice and tight in there. And then I'm gonna drill holes between the two bars. So these are clamped really tight in there. And I'm gonna drill up basically half a hole on either side. Uh, I wasn't sure if this was gonna work. This is why I tested this earlier today. It works just fine. But the position of those holes are dictated by my design here. So I can just sort of cut this out where my scissors like that take my marker and draw where those holes need to go on the midline. So that's right there. And now I can take this over to the drill press. Again, make sure it's super tight and drill my eighth inch holes to accommodate the eighth inch rods that I'm gonna use. Now is the time to drill a bunch of holes in these guys here. Uh, the first holes are gonna be down through there between both of these pieces. I'm gonna do this nice and slowly. Got some lube to make sure everything goes well and uh, that's all, really all I'm going to do. Got an eighth inch bit. I got it chucked up nicely in this vise and then I have a clamp. Once I get this sort of centered like that, this clamp goes down to make sure this isn't going to go anywhere. So slowly but surely we're going to make some holes. And we're through, there we go. One hole down, three to go. Cool, we got our three holes in there. The next thing we need to do is put some holes in it in a different direction. Oop. So, I've got these guys here and they're all kind of stuck together, which is actually pretty nice. I also wanna figure out where the holes are gonna go. So I've got my pattern here. And it does matter which way it goes. I happen to know it goes this way, like that. And then I have this punch here that will help start my drill like that. It also marks where the hole's gonna go. Like that. That's where my holes go. So that goes in the vise. And it gets tightened down. Just like so. Now I'm gonna swap out the drill bit for one that's slightly different size. This bit here is sized for the tap I'm gonna use for my machine screws. You'll see what I mean in a little bit. But this is just gonna go all the way through. So I'm gonna line it up just like before. Line that up. Clamp it down, lube it up, drill some holes. There we go, right through. Good to go. So these are gonna get, screw the two halves together and hopefully those other holes I just drilled are still lined up. That's the plan anyway. I have these two holes drilled. They should keep everything nice and lined up. Um, one of these will be threaded. So let's say this one. This one here, I'm gonna drill these holes a little bit bigger for my machine screws to go through. So line that up, put in a bigger drill bit. And uh, I don't really need to clamp this down. It should be just fine. Making the hole a little bigger. Right through. Right through. Awesome. 
Time to go back to the workbench. So here's our handiwork. I'm going to tap the smaller holes. Let's see. These holes here are going to get tapped. Like I said before, the, the drill bit that I used is designed for this specific tap. So I can throw this in my little vise here and carefully tap those holes. I can just hang out there, I think. Or let's go. Yeah, it should be fine. So I've got a little bit of oil here just to lube the, uh, the tap. And then I'm going to slowly and carefully cut in the screw threads. And it pays to take your time with this. The steel of the tap is very hard, but it's very brittle. It can snap right off. So do a couple turns, then go backwards to break the chips off, and take your time. And we are through. There we go. That is good to go. We can undo that and thread the next one. Here we go. It's free. And it should fit one of these machine screws perfectly. And look at that, it totally does. All right, time to do the other one. We are tapped and ready to go. Now there's a bunch of extra like bits hanging off of this and I wanna clean them up. So for the circular bits, I've got a countersink on my drill. I can just go and zap that. Nice little 45 degree bevel in there. Now the rest of these though, where I drilled them, have some, some sort of sharp-ish bits coming off of them. So I can use some files to clean those up. So I've just got some little needle files here. For the top, I can just run it over like that until it's nice and smooth. Uh, it should make it all operate easier and it should also make it safer to handle so it doesn't have these sharp things sticking off of them. So those are fairly good. Ugh. And then, oops. Clamp this down. Do this edge, where the, where the drill popped out, there's some material kind of popping up there. So that can get leveled out so that it's safer and easier to use. And then there's a little bit on that round part. So I have this round file to clean that up. Here we are before with some rough edges there, a little bit sticking off and then this is the one that is all cleaned up, nice and smooth. All right, I made a bit of a mess, sanded and rounded over these corners so it's nice and safe, not gonna hurt my hand. This goes together like so, like so. Eventually, I'm gonna use these eighth inch rods to connect my blades. But for now, I have eighth inch drill bits, so these are gonna lie in like so. Hopefully that'll work. And then that will lock in like that. And then I should be able to just screw them in like that. And everything should work just fine. Okay, that seems pretty good. It's a little loose over here. The cool thing about this design is that um, you can unscrew these a little bit and adjust the length of the claw so that it would fit better, I presume, and then tighten it down until it's clamped down really hard. And then these won't, whoa, these will move. Oh my goodness. I need to clamp that down more. There we go, now that's in there, perfect. <laughs> All according to plan. Uh, and now I should be able to do that and there we go and that works that seems like it's gonna be pretty good so the uh, this thing will be held in my hand I'm probably gonna round this off a bit so that it's a little bit more comfortable and also so that perhaps I don't see this in my fist so I might try and cut that off uh, later 
but then these are going to be rods that come out of here and I'll bend them to accommodate the blades. So the blades will go kind of kind of like that like so a little bit higher so these will have to bend up and hook around and everything but just for demonstration we'll do that so kind of like that only a little higher that's it doing a little bit of prototyping for the wires that are going to come out and hold the blade this is a piece of aluminum i've got brass i've got steel these are all eighth inch rods that i'm kind of figuring out now I'm looking at my reference image on the screen there and I have a pretty good idea of what this ought to look like. But for now, I'm just bending this with some pliers, let's see here, to try and get it into this S shape, kind of S curve shape by hand. Try and make that as tight as possible. That looks all right, probably. Need to tighten that down a little bit and then flatten it out a little bit. This is something I don't have a lot of experience with, so I'm just kind of winging it. That's kind of okay. I don't know. There we go. It's kind of better. That's going to go in like that. That might work, so we can tighten that down. Let's see, like that. Put it in the hand and see how it looks. Cool. I think it needs to, needs to curve up a bit more. But I've got my template claw here. Should be able to, there we go. Actually, that's pretty good. Boy, that is, that is really good. Look at that. I think it needs to tip up a little bit. I could just do that by hand. Even a little bit more than that. There we go. These are, I've got soot on my knuckles because I laser cut this. <laughs> hey, that looks pretty all right. His claws come out of his hand way low in the new movie. So that looks pretty good. I'll double check the, uh, the reference image, but that looks pretty all right. And it's hard, very hard to see where it comes out of my hand, where that comes out. So that's That'll, I think that'll do. Now I just have to make, you know, six of these. <laughs> all right, instead of bending all of these wires manually by hand, I've made a jig, and I think this is gonna work out. I just made this one, and it works out really well, like that. So here's how it works. This is the Punish Props branded Wolverine claw bar bending jig, bet and bending. So I've got these two screws here, and I have a kind of a line on there Take my metal bar to that line, and then bend it oh, carefully. This is a uh, this is not as robust as I think it needs to be, but it'll work as a perfect concept. Bend it around like that, and then put a screw in whoop, here, whoop, and then bend it the other way. Bend that back this way. Until it kind of matches the line, like that. Give this nice S shape that fairly closely matches what I had before. Like so I can just gauge how close it is. That's pretty close. I can always tweak it a little bit later. Gonna jump in real quick, a little later in the day. I'm making a bunch of these pokey things, so I made a new jig. Here's the old one, no good. New one, bigger chunk of plastic, big quarter 20 screws. This just goes in like so. Gets bent up like so. 
And then you put new bolt goes in like that. And a screw goes in like that. And then it gets bent like that. And then it gets cut like that. Take that out. Take that out. Ta-da! Much quicker. Then that can get added and adjusted as needed on my clothing. There is my prototype, my prototype claws. These are just cardboard, but uh, they go sliding on to these little metal nubbins that I made. At this point, I can do some tweaking on the position of these, although that's pretty good right there. And what's great about this is that I can loosen this and slide them in and out based on where they need to be positioned in my hand. So I am really kind of over the moon with how these turned out. Much more comfortable than my previous claws, these guys right here. A lot more comfortable than those. Uh, and they look pretty great. And they look closer to the new movie than, than before. That is how I've done my mechanical claw holding device thing. I just need to make one more of these. And that's it for this video, for my <laughs> instructional bit here. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit about making really comfortable and useful Wolverine claws. The rest of the blades I'll be doing on next week's video. And I'll be live streaming that again, twitch.tv slash punished props, noon Pacific on Tuesday. So head on over there and give us a follow if you don't want to miss it. So I'll be making the blades, attaching them to these poking bits, and then painting them up so they look all shiny and adamantium. Thanks again for hanging with me today. You guys are awesome. Uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We got over 500 videos, tutorials on prop and costume making. Uh, head on over to our website, punishprops.com, if you want to check out more. And uh, until next week, keep being awesome. I'll see you all in the next build. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.